Ladies and gentlemen, football fans of all ages, welcome to a preview of Super Bowl 50 between the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos. In this episode tonight, we will go through the potential scenarios of the Super Bowl. We will go through the matchups of the Super Bowl, each player, player position group. We will even go through the history of what this could be going back in, looking back in at some of the statistics and seeing how this game could relate to the previous games in history. First, I'd actually like to start with that history. Based on personal analysis, the last time we had a scenario where there was a subpar offense that was that was kind of carried into a Super Bowl by a phenomenal defense was uh well was roughly about 9 years ago in Super Bowl 41 when the Chicago Bears were pretty much carried into the Super Bowl by the by Brian Urlacher and the Bears and that team but their opponent happens to be the quarterback that is in this matchup this week and th- this time Peyton Manning Peyton Manning who had a good defense and a very good receiving core and all uh, pretty good weapons were too much for the Bears and when that matchup happened the Bears defense couldn't complete it because you can't put all of your weight on the defense and expect to win a game like that. Peyton had so many weapons and it overwhelmed the Bears. Now, we've also heard, and if you follow ESPN and NFL Network and all that stuff, you can also hear the comparison that the Carolina Panthers are actually looking like the other famous Chicago Bears team, the 85 Bears. And you know what? That defense does look phenomenal. It does. And it might be a stretch. And, I, you know, it really might be a stretch. But they, don't may, they may not have a sweetness at running back, but they have a sweetness at quarterback. You know, we call him, we call him today, we call him Superman. But, uh, you know, this guy... This guy, he's got some talent. And their coach, heck, the guy played on the 85 Bears. If he can play on the 85 Bears, man, he could probably coach the 2016, the 20, 2015 Carolina Panthers. We're 30 years removed from the 85 Bears. Heck, this is an interesting matchup here. We got a coach from 30 years ago was involved in the 85 Bears, that dominant team that happened to go 15 and 1 in the regular season. They went 15 and 1 in the regular season. Yeah, that's a good move. And what happened? Well, they went all the way to the Super Bowl. They win the Super Bowl. The Panthers. Well, they went 15 and 1. And they looked good doing it. There are times they're right now at their point right now in their offense. They score over 40 points per game. Just slightly over 40 points per game. And their defense my gosh, it is taking, yeah, and part of that 40 points, part of that 40 points is the defense. Luke Keekley is getting that ball, taking that ball away pretty much, and he's a linebacker. You put a guy on defense because he doesn't have hands. This guy's got hands. And for some reason, somehow they have two supermen. You know, we talk about, and they, you know, in the past, Luke Keekley was Clark Kent. He was Clark Kent, and he didn't have the cape on. But then they put the guy on offense, Cam Newton, and he had the cape on. Ooh, it's a it's a beautiful matchup with the Carolina Panthers. But now, now that we're kind of breaking down those positions, let's transition into the tail of the tape, how we're going to break down. We're going to use that method to break down the two teams and see which team matches up better in comparison for this Super Bowl in San Francisco. <laughs> well, first, obviously... First, we're going to have to discuss the quarterback position. And so we have the young the young buck, the the pretty much the racehorse. This guy is 250 pounds or so. You know, the guy's a a beast. He's a fullback playing quarterback. 
the guy plows through people as if it would you know what they didn't matter like they he plows through them as if they were a little 185 pound cornerback and they're linebackers this guy is tough and the guy hurdles over i made the comparison to sweetness earlier this guy does does what is what peyton did he peyton would jump over the line when he was on the goal line my gosh last week we saw cam newton jump and hurdle over a linebacker and hit get hit by that linebacker but he still hurdled over that linebacker and scored a touchdown he sacrifices life and let now sometimes you don't want to see your quarterback do that but sometimes that shows that heart of the quarterback and with his big body you don't have to really worry about injury too much the guy got a flak jacket on he's got 250 pounds he's got natural armor this guy is a tank but he can run and he can run real hard. They got a good running game. Jonathan Stewart there. Mike Tolbert. Ooh. They got power. They got lightning. They got that thunder lightning package where they can run right up the middle. They can run to the outside. And if anything, if you leave Cam Newton wide open, he can run all over you. He's got the speed and the power. And he could do a lot of damage. And to be honest, even though yeah, we are evaluating that quarterback position, Cam Newton can throw the ball. And he can throw the ball from his back foot, leaning back almost parallel to the ground. He can shoot that ball 40 yards or more. The guy's got some strength in that arm. And even if he's off balance, he can shoot it. So that being said about Cam, we go to the other quarterback, Peyton Manning. Now, I made the statement earlier about subpar offense. This Benford Bronco offense, even with all the heavy hitters, is pretty subpar and it kind of starts at the top peyton manning leads the nfl in interceptions in the regular season that's not good that is awful he and that's after like his benching like even his benching he still leads the nfl in interceptions so that's not a very good thing for him to do their offense has never gotten going there's no consistency between the receivers, the running backs, or anything. I would almost have to give the edge in this case because of versatility, even though Peyton, Peyton has the mind for it. Peyton has the mind to dissect, but does he have the physical ability? Yeah, I could dissect the defense, stand back there, and see it's cover two, know where that ball needs to go. But if I can't put the ball there, well, there is a problem. If I see cover two and I'm like, okay, I can hit that ball right on the outside. I can hit the ball right outside on the corner route but i can't shoot the ball down the right to that corner route and instead that ball floats and that safety has enough time to come underneath it pick it off and take it to the house we're going to see exactly what happened in super bowl 48 when the seahawks walked all over these guys peyton looked vulnerable then and he could look very vulnerable now i'm going to give the edge at quarterback to cam newton of the panthers now to running back we had touched on it a little bit. We're going at running back here. So we've got, yeah, we've got two good running back, or, uh, you know, I would say average running back cores. Now, obviously, the Broncos have not, you know, C.J. Anderson, Ronnie Hillman, not been consistent this season. The whole Denver offense hasn't been consistent this season. Even with the new system that was designed to amplify the run game. This game, this, this, offensive system by Gary Kubiak was intended to shoot this running game to the top as if it was back in the late 90s when Terrell Davis was running this thing and that man made an MVP now some could say that was Mike Shanahan and not not Gary Kubiak but again Gary Kubiak did make something out of Justin, Justin Forsett in Baltimore so there's something there but the Peyton, Peyton Manning couldn't run the system. He had some difficulties in the first 10 weeks, which led to his benching. And the running game has been very inconsistent at times. Now we go to the Panthers, and we, we kind of talked about it. We have the Thunder Lightning package, and then we have the all-around beast with Cam Newton. We have Superman and the Thunder, Thunder Lightning package. Tolbert, Stewart, and Newton. These three guys, they can run, they can run. They, they've averaged, they've had 100 yards across over 30 games over at least two seasons. At least two seasons, they've crossed over 100 yards per game rushing. That's 
Yeah, the whole team, collectively. That's impressive. That means they're consistently pounding the rock, tiring out defenses, keeping offenses off the field. And that's the thing. If you fear Peyton Manning, if you fear Peyton Manning, you keep him off the field. No matter if you believe he's got a strong arm or not, if you fear Peyton Manning, what you do is you keep him off the field. And I think with that ability of Cam Newton, Mike Tolbert, and Jonathan Stewart, my gosh, that is an interesting scenario where Peyton Manning could be the Jim Kelly of this situation. And Carolina Panthers would be Emma Smith of the Dallas Cowboys. This is, you know, that you could run the ball and shorten the game. The Panthers may never come off the field because they'll be running the ball. This could, you know, half of a quarter could go go away just simply on the running game. But then there's also that capability of something else. I'm giving the edge for the running back position to the Carolina Panthers. We go to the receiving core. And in the receiving core, we have a it's it's an interesting scenario where you have these pro bowl receivers on one hand in the Denver Broncos. These guys who are, you know, how in the world are these guys not going over a thousand yards apiece? You know, Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas. And you can't get over a thousand yards because of inconsistency. These guys are all pro receivers, but they're not showing it. They're not playing like all pro receivers. So there's that inconsistency. But if they spark up in the Super Bowl, there's an interesting scenario. Because We'll see what happens with matchup-wise, but, you know, there's definitely something there. If they spark up, they have the ability. We know that Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders can get the job done if they're allowed to. And also if they're able, to, if they want to. But we'll see what happens in a couple weeks. Now, going to the next matchup here of with the uh, Panthers receivers. To be honest, they're almost it's almost a bunch of nobodies. And I, I think that's been their rap this whole year. And even then, you could almost compare that receiving squad currently to the Seahawks receiving squad from two years ago. Doug Baldwin, an unknown. Golden Tate, an unknown. Jermaine Curse, an unknown. You don't know these names, and they wanted to fight for that respect. They were angry. They were hungry. And they got the job done. Now... With that being said, you know, we got Ted Ginn. And Ted Ginn's still a speedster. He can stretch the field. Now, he's had some catching problems. His hands aren't too great. But Ted Ginn can catch the ball. He can go down the field and stretch a defense. Devin Funches, rookie, kind of young, kind of unproven. But the big one, and I'm going to kind of clump all these guys together. I'm including the tight ends in this mix. The Broncos don't really have enough, like a a consistent tight end. They brought in Vernon Davis. They have um, his name slips my mind at the moment. He was a former uh, Texan tight end, but yeah, he was with Gary Kubiak in those systems. But you go to the Panthers, and you're talking about an All-Pro tight end and Greg Olson. Who is going to match up with Greg Olson? Last week, last Sunday against the Patriots, the Broncos didn't even stop Gronkowski. Gronkowski went over it clearly over 150, I think even over 170 yards. Got a couple touchdowns. I got at least a touchdown. That's the thing. You, If you're not going to stop Rob Gronkowski, if you're not going to stop him, how are you going to stop Greg Olson? And that's a scenario. That's interesting, and I almost have to give the ed- I'm going to give the edge based on reputation to the Broncos. But I will definitely say there is a chance that the uh, Carolina Panthers are somewhat equal in this scenario here. But I'm going to give the edge to the Broncos based on reputation. Now we'll flip over to the defense. These are two top five defenses. You know, everyone's talking about the offenses because that's the exciting part to uh, a normal fan. The exciting part's the offense because they love seeing points. They love seeing the ball go downfield. It's exciting. I, I will agree. It is exciting. 
running the ball and playing defense isn't that exciting, but it's necessary when you're going for a championship. Now, here's the thing. We have two good defenses. We have one coming off of a game where they got to Tom Brady 20 times, just hitting him 20 times. They sacked him, obviously, less, but they hit him. Even after throwing the ball, they hit him 20 times. Now, this defense might be hot, but here's the thing, though. How much of that defense being hot and that those 20 hits was because of the Patriots' lack of an offensive line? And how much of that was actual talent? Now, they've got some good players out there, Demarius, or DeMarcus Ware, Von Miller. They've got some good guys. I'll give them credit. And then their coverage group, Aqib Tlaib. Aqib Tlaib. But here's the thing I will say. Chris Harris, he's the, he's the X factor. He was no, he, in that uh, Patriot game, he had a shoulder injury. If they jam him, if they hit his shoulder when they come off their break, he could almost be, like, not paralyzed, but he could be um, almost, like, stunned in pain kind of thing. Like, he'll be immobilized by pain where he can't even protect it oh, against the corner or a receiver because of that pain, so much pain. So we got that matchup with the Broncos. Now we go over to the Panthers, and they've got that pass rush. Luke Keekley's the dominant linebacker there. And then we've got Josh Norman. Josh Norman lining up most likely either again, he'll either face Demarius Thomas or Emmanuel Sanders. Whoever he doesn't face will probably end up getting open more and most likely will. Uh, get more touches from Peyton than the other because I'm pretty sure Josh Norman is going to run them out of the game. In this case, I would almost have to say the defenses are fairly equal. It's a, it's an easy answer to say that. It's a cop-out kind of answer, but I think uh, I think the defenses are equal in this situation. Now, based on the tail of the tape that we just went through, it looks like the Panthers have an edge in this contest and they have a scenario so now we're going to get to the pick basically and in this case who is going to be the Super Bowl 50 champion now everyone's talking about the farewell season of Peyton Manning he went out he's you know he's kind of having a bad year but he could go out hot uh, and retire as storybook as that sounds, I think it's going to go to the guy, the young guy, the mobile guy, Cam Newton, and I'm going to pick the Carolina Panthers to win this Super Bowl. It'll be close, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.